everyone. Uh, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. Uh, sorry it's been a couple weeks, but I got uh, slammed by a bunch of uh, first of the year injection molding projects. Uh, so I got a little backed up with parts. Uh, the, the big molding machine has just got heaps of parts under it right now. Uh, which uh, led me to uh, realize it's time to buy a couple of conveyor belts. So that's what we got here. I uh, purchased a few conveyor, conveyor belts uh, from a company in Ohio called, uh, let's see, what's it called? Plastic Processing Equipment. Uh, so I'm going to show you how uh, I'm going to install these and use them and, uh, yeah, do the unveil uncrating. Uh, so uh, bear with me and I'll get the uh, hammer and uh, crowbar and we'll do a... Uh, a uh, unboxing, uh, kind of like uh, you know the major award in the, in a Christmas story. Uh, that's that's how I feel right now. I don't have fragile printed on it, but uh, but anyway, you get the idea. So let's open these up. And now for the second one. All right, so we got the, uh, uh, we'll start with this uh, shorter crate. Uh, this is a five, or a shorter uh, uh, conveyor belt. Uh, this is a five foot long conveyor belt, uh, variable speed. And uh, the other one is a six foot long. Uh, and I got those two links because that's what they had in stock. Otherwise it'd be a three week uh, lead time. So, which uh, basically I'd be done shipping parts by then. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out how this uh, thing goes together. I'll bring it on its side gently and it looks like so this is the stand this these conveyor belts uh, have adjustable angles on them so if you look under here I'll gently ride this up on the uh, motors probably not the best idea it looks like I got to loosen uh, these adjustable angle uh, brackets to bring this uh, this vertical uh, adjustable height column um, around 90 degrees so it slides into this uh, into this uh, foot right here so let me go ahead and uh, get a wrench and I will uh, make, make that happen all right uh, one second yeah it should be pretty straightforward here uh, what we're doing so I'm gonna grab onto the back we'll loosen this uh, looks like a grade 3 bolt there I oh, got it pretty tight Okay, there it goes. Now we can move it around. Cut a little paint, but that's all right. Okay. Looks like we have one direction of, no, actually there's a few directions of adjustment. There's three holes at the top here. And uh, so it looks like we've got, I don't know, plus or minus, uh, it's like a, a full 180 degree adjustment on the, on the angle, it, it looks like. I should probably confirm that in a bit. And we'll go ahead and tighten this thing up. So as process equipment goes, these weren't too expensive. I think it was like $1,600 each or something, uh, give or take, maybe $1,700. So not too bad. I don't know if it's, made in Ohio but I purchased it and it was shipped from Ohio um, so it may actually be made in the USA I don't see any stickers that say otherwise at the moment uh, so that's cool uh, I'm sure the motor is probably China but okay let's go ahead and uh, stick our 
our adjustable height leg into the foot of this machine. I'll zoom out for you. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick this whole thing up and stick it into its foot here. And it's basically all supported by this uh, central uh, pivot. I guess I need to maybe look to see. Oh, there's a jam screw in there. And uh, so let me pull that out. I probably need to pull this cotter pin out too. Uh, okay, so let's uh, stick it in there. Actually, I can demonstrate how this thing uh, can can be moved around on the shop floor. So, it, it, yeah, it slides around pretty easily. You can see I scratched the paint a little bit on that adjustment, but I'm sure that's going to happen because uh, I'm going to be reconfiguring this a lot. I may put a plastic washer or just be more careful, but I may have to touch that up. Anyway, so yeah, you can see it slides around, uh, holds its position. So let's set up the other conveyor belt. Uh, and then we can uh, have a, a 90 degree conveying, one belt to the other. So I got you on the uh, GoPro here so we can walk around these uh, new conveyor belts. Uh, but this is kind of a, a uh, exploded view of the uh, conveyor uh, from plastic processing equipment in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I'm not affiliated with uh, any of these folks, by the way. So I'm just, I just need conveyors. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it looks like it is made in the USA. Uh, I don't see anything that says otherwise. So we'll go over and check these out. Uh, so this is an overview of the belt. Uh, it's a white belt, FDA approved. Here's the lacing right now that connects it. Uh, this is a DC motor according to the uh, um, uh, manual. And then here's the motor controller, which looks to be made in uh, KB Electronics in Coral Springs, Florida. So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so let's turn it on. Uh, so we flip the power switch on here. And uh, yeah, it just goes. So it's pretty quiet. I turned off some of the stuff in the shop so you can hear it. Um, speed control. Let me get something on here so you can see. So you want to see our toys. So that's off. Pretty good tight control of speed. All the way up to full speed. It's pretty quick. Uh, yeah, so looking down here, we've got, uh, this is the belt tensioner. So uh, basically you tighten this, this uh, 5 8 11 thread, I think, uh, and uh, pushes the belt out. Here's a bearing for it. Uh, I don't know if every component is made in the USA. Uh, here's the uh, adjustable stand with the uh, kind of the angle adjust. And yeah, pretty nice. Um, so I'm going to set up uh, the other belt, which is, uh, this is a five foot belt here. And this is the six foot belt. Uh, I probably need to set these up. I'll, I'm going to move these into where the molding machine is running. Uh, it's a hundred ton machine. It's been just cranking out parts and backing up in there. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is basically the same belt as the other one, just a little bit shorter. I did want to play with uh, transferring parts a little bit, so I'll go ahead and turn this belt on. And uh, here's Sierra's toy coming. <laughs> and she's already uh, chewed a hole in it. Uh, her, her toys last about 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, so uh, if we turn on this other belt and we uh, drop it on here, we'll have to figure out the exact uh, speed once these, um, once the molding machine is dropping parts on it, it's probably going to be a lot slower than this. But I was interested in how this happens. You see how the part rolled off the end there. Uh, so I got a few other parts. Uh, these are these are some cut sprues, and we got to figure out how to prevent parts from falling off uh, as we transfer to one belt to the other. So that's kind of like what we want to have happen. And then coming along, uh, the parts drop into a container. 
I won't have it drop that far. Uh, I'll angle this belt down so that uh, there's just like a few inch drop. But uh, yeah, that's the idea. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with what I see here. So let's go ahead and get these under the, uh, the 100 ton molding machine. Fit. Look how, look how close that is. It's about a eighth of an inch. It's kind of hard to see. Here's the, yeah, uh, but I am getting real close to the uh, to the brand new uh, stainless steel wall there, and I don't want to dent my uh, wall. And the foot here is uh, probably like. Uh, one inch too tall so I may have to actually pull this guy back out get the uh, cut off wheel and cut an uh, inch off of this adjustable foot here but let me see if I can fit it in there the other issue is we got the gonna have to shimmy it in here to get the uh, end of the conveyor past this uh, structural rib here uh, and up inside of this hole oh and by the way this uh, I removed a, a finger guard on the bottom of this molding machine, so this is an OSHA violation. Uh, so you can't do this if you got employees or kids or dogs running around. Uh, only, basically, only the um, the person integrating this can be in here uh, if you remove guards like this off of a molding machine. So don't do this at home. <laughs> All right, I'll get back to you once I hopefully sneak this guy in here without having to cut. Uh, inch off of the foot here. All right, one second. Okay, I pulled the uh, the five foot conveyor back out of the uh, molding area, and we'll cut um, one inch off of this. Yeah, I think I'll maybe we'll cut three inches off. Uh, that'll give me a little more adjustability. I'd hate to have to keep going in and out. So let's go ahead and cut this off. At uh, I'll just go just shy of the bottom of that, so two and a half inches or so. Ah, it's eighth inch thick. It's pretty sturdy. I clean this up a little bit. It's not quite square, but it doesn't matter. Here's the conveyor underneath, uh, up this direction, underneath this triangular part. The parts are falling, are, are falling out of the mold. And um, one of the needs for this conveyor is to lower that, uh, reduce the, uh, the, the height uh, that the part falls. Because the farther it falls, the faster it gets and the more damage it gets from just hitting other parts in a bucket underneath there. So the idea is to angle this uh, conveyor up uh, so that the uh, bottom of the conveyor is just underneath the, uh, the mold that opens. So the part is only falling out like four inches or so. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do that. Yeah, here's the GoPro. <laughs> uh, so this is the situation. Uh, we are, uh, these spurious wires are like uh, fans and things, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna tilt this uh, conveyor belt up into way up in there where the bottom of the mold is so let's see how easy or hard this is I'm dragging on the fortunately it just fits in the inside of this uh, opening in the bottom of the molding machine here so you can see uh, I gotta account for part size uh, the parts that are molded on the, from the mold that's in this machine right now are about an inch and a half tall. So I'm going to have to scoot this thing forward a little bit as well. So let me go ahead and uh, re reset and I'll get back. 
Oh, actually, this camera's still running, but let's see what we can do here. I'll push this guy further in. That's good. Yeah, I'm definitely glad I cut uh, two and a half to three inches off this post uh, because I probably will have to cut more off in the future uh, given that there's about two inches clearance from the bottom frame of the molding machine. So uh, that looks good. Let me get a first person view here. All right, so you can see here that I got about a one and a half inch to two inch gap uh, in the in the bottom frame of the molding machine. Let me zoom out so you can get a better idea. So this, we're uh, the kind of the front of the molding machine where the mold action is, and uh, this hole, which is almost completely plugged by the conveyor, is where the uh, parts fall through. But now they're going to fall, hit the conveyor at the front there, and then pass through this this gap right right here and come out and then drop onto the second conveyor. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts because uh, I think I kind of optimized this uh, setup here. So uh, yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna measure the, uh, the height here. Uh, so the top of the second conveyor needs to get up to about 25. I'm gonna, or let's just say 24 inches. Let's see if we can actually get that orientation set up outside before we bring it in here. So I measured the, uh, the second uh, conveyor belt out there uh, and tipped the, uh, the, the front of it as far down as it can go uh, with the current um, stand in the middle, the kind of the quasi-universal stand. But it only went down to about 26 inches, uh, and that's with the, the receiving side of the conveyor uh, picking up parts from the angled down first conveyor. Uh, but that means since it's a, a central pivot that the other end of the conveyor is going to be way up in the air. Uh, the idea is that I'm going to have a big bin, a plastic clean bin, to collect the parts that come out of the molding machine and the two conveyors. Uh, but I think everything is too high and that central pivoting uh, foot uh, I may have to eliminate uh, or at least tuck under the conveyor for now. Um, and that means uh, probably two sets of feet, one on each end. Uh, so I got to figure out how to do that um, stably and economically without welding up a whole thing. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, think about that for a second. All right. I'm back from Home Depot and uh, we got some of these uh, uh, milk crates here, uh, which uh, they sell. Uh, they call them exact or genuine milk crates. They seem to be the best for uh, stacking options to get the different various heights of the, of the, of the conveyor belt. Uh, I also made uh, this real uh, quick and easy cross beam out of uh, Delrin plastic and attached the uh, corners to the cross beam. Uh, to the milk crate. Uh, the milk crate is the same width as the frame for the conveyor belt. So uh, these, these cross beams will be useful in the future if I have different supports. Uh, this milk crate wanted to rotate up and it seems to be more stable. It's actually resting on the bottom of the, of the conveyor belt. And again, all of these architectures are for quick um, job shop type of uh, setups. So the next setup will probably be with a robot dropping parts on it uh, in a different part of the shop. Uh, yeah, so I'm working on this uh, transition. Uh, I got this piece of roofing plastic. I start cutting it out here to, uh, to, to basically make a, a better transition here so parts don't get caught uh, on that ledge. So let me go ahead and finish cutting this thing out. Again, a real quick and dirty solution um, because time is money, as they say. Right, I'm trying to figure out how to uh, prevent the falling parts from the mold uh, from damaging the uh, 
the uh, belt surface, which is kind of like a um, silicone rubber, uh, kind of softer surface. Uh, it's probably going to get marred up from parts falling the, the half meter distance here, or a foot and a half. But I uh, found this uh, trash can lid, this old rickety uh, trash can lid. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is put this uh, lid in and attach it to the A side of the molding machine, like so. And then you can see how the lid, when it's flipped backwards, uh, is a nice uh, shock absorber. Let's see if I can do this with the, holding the camera. But it'll, it'll stop the part from uh, smacking the, uh, the belt. Uh, so what I do need to do is cut off this lip here so I'm not catching and accumulating parts here. But I think that's gonna work. So let's uh, give that a try. I'll take this to the bandsaw and basically cut the end off of this thing. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and cut this thing. Uh, we'll just cut the lip off. We'll leave the, the two ribs here because uh, that helps with the structural support. But this whole thing will get more flimsy as what, which is what we want once I hack off this uh, this catch here on the end. It's probably going to be noisy. But anyway, so that is the uh, the part um, bumper, if you will, to protect the belt right underneath it. So here is the uh, trash can lid shock absorber for the uh, for the for the conveyor belt here this is to arrest the fall of parts coming out of the mold uh, onto this surface so that I'm not tearing up the uh, the belt uh, from thousands of parts dropping there is probably going to be some impact but I can also adjust the location of the trash can let me drop the part and uh, yeah it kind of stayed in there uh, the actual parts I'm making are probably going to be lighter than that one. So let's see how it falls up. Okay, there it's a different orientation. You got to make sure that basically there's no way that these parts get jammed up. And into the bin. So let's try that one more time. I'll do another representative uh, drop here. Okay, that was nice. There it goes. <laughs> And here it comes onto the transition. And it fell that way this time. I guess you could sit here all night and watch parts <laughs> slide down the conveyor or roll down the conveyor. Okay, and that's how that one fell in. Let's try it one more time. I'll, I promise I won't bore you too much. So that was a good impact and another orientation. Let's see how our part comes this way. Oh, I hung up a little bit there. I have a feeling it's mostly going to be sitting in this direction, the part that is, and into the box. I know, I may be channeling a little bit of this old Tony in this one. Yay, conveyor works. This is a video of the uh, 100 ton uh, boy mowing machine running. It's about a, I don't know, it's a, a uh, 15 year old machine, uh, but it's still working. I like to call it a Chewbacca because it kind of sounds like Chewbacca. Right there. <laughs> anyway, I got a uh, plastic uh, vacuum feeder at the top.